Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. We're going to be speaking with Karen Zatteray. She's joining us here as chairman and CEO and president at Oxygen Incorporated. She's joining us to discuss the development and commercialization of technologies for peripheral nerve regeneration and repair that can restore nerve function and quality of life to patients using innovative, clinically proven, and economically effective solutions. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Karen, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Neil. Uh, you're wearing uh, many hats, obviously, uh, chairman, CEO, and president at Axogen. Give us a bit of your professional background and, and talk about um, all of those roles at Axogen. Well, um, my background has always been in medical devices and biotech and helping to really translate good science into things that impact patient care. And I started working at Johnson & Johnson in a variety of roles and grew and learned a lot about the healthcare business from there. And in uh, 2006, joined Axigen. When Axigen was a fledgling idea of uh, technology coming out of the McKnight Brain Institute at the University of Florida. (laughs) And uh, they had some thoughts and intellectual property on ways that uh, peripheral nerve repairs could be, peripheral nerve could be repaired differently. And it looked like a really impactful patient opportunity to change healthcare. And so I joined Axigen at that point and have been with them since then. What is peripheral nerve damage and what causes it? Well, nerves are, think of them as the wires of your body. They're carrying signals from the central nervous system to tell your muscles to move or to give you uh, feedback about the environment, sensation, vibration, temperature. And that all works well as long as the nerves are functioning properly. But nerves can be damaged uh, in a variety of ways. We focus usually on the physical damage of nerves. So these are things that might be damaged in a traumatic injury, Um, car accidents, power tools, cooking in the kitchen and accidentally cutting yourself. Those are all ways that nerves are commonly injured. They're also injured in many surgeries. Mm -hmm. Uh, Many of the morbidities of surgical procedures are really nerve issues that where the nerve was transected as a necessary part of the procedure, but now causes the patient uh, ongoing quality of life difficulties because of that nerve being transected and no longer carrying the signals that it used to carry. How hard is it to pinpoint that cause to diagnose that that, uh, peripheral nerve damage is the uh, culprit? Yeah, it it ranges. Um, Sometimes it's quite obvious. Mm -hmm. As a patient, you might notice a whole area that you no longer have sensation. That's probably an indication that there's something going on with the nerve. Um, Sometimes it might be paralysis or muscle weakness would tell you that there there could be something going on with the nerve. Um, Other times it's less obvious. Um, One of the more uh, challenging symptoms is patients who suffer from chronic pain. So pain, uh, nerves that heal badly may be, and there are many sources of pain, but may be a source of ongoing chronic pain. And, uh, and those can be a little more challenging to diagnose. So it, it always is going to be a, a patient needs to be aware that it might be a nerve issue, but it'll take a professional to help the patient to really pinpoint what is the damage and if it's damaged that can be repaired. Are there several options for treatment or management? Well, I think it first comes down to what is the problem. Um, historically, the way nerves were repaired, if I just start, uh, we, we focus on kind of three things that can happen to nerves. When nerves are cut, how do you put them back together? So think of, again, that wire analogy. If you cut the cord to your TV, it won't work anymore. You've got to do something to put the cord back together to get that, that function going. You have to do the same thing in nerve repair. Um, another area that we work with uh, in repair is protecting nerves. So nerves that are compressed or have pressure on them, it alters the signal conduction. Um, most people are familiar with carpal tunnel syndrome, where you get numbness and weakness in your fingers um, from a little compression point in your wrist. But that same concept is true of any nerve in the body. So compression can cause that muscle weakness and, uh, and, and with surgically protecting the nerve, you can help to relieve that compression. And then lastly, there are times where you want to cut a nerve and, uh, and not have it send signals anymore. So think of 
um, an amputee who may have phantom limb pain. Mm -hmm. And that's a nerve that's trying to send signals back to the, to the brain saying my foot hurts, but that patient may not have a foot. Well, now you want to end the nerve so it stops sending those signals. And those are the types of surgical procedures that we are trying to solve. Um, in the case of transection, historically what surgeons would do is take a nerve from somewhere else in your body, creating a permanent deficit there, and transfer it to try and fix something that for you, the patient, was more important. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that has some drawbacks. <laughs> because yeah. you're giving something up that's functioning to fix something else. Yes. Um, so today, you're able to offer a solution that doesn't require you to have that deficit. <laughs> For the person that decides to soldier through with this pain, it's undiagnosed, uh, it's untreated. How long does this patient have to take advantage of any of the repair options? Yeah. A a excellent question. Um, nerve repair is not emergency, but sooner is always better than later. Uh, better outcomes happen with uh, the sooner the repair is done. So on a traumatic injury, we typically would recommend that a patient be repaired uh, either immediately or up to within three weeks. Uh, they can get some uh, functional recovery up to a year. So as I said, it's not an emergency, but the outcomes go down over time. So it's always better to get a repair done sooner and not wait. And, and that is one of the problems is patients often say, well, I have this strange numbness or my, you know, my arm isn't working. So I decided to wait and see, and they'll wait six, eight months, and then they start to have diminished outcomes. So one message we really want to help communicate to patients so they can be better advocates for their care is if they see these symptoms, to seek a specialist quickly. Would any neurologist be knowledgeable about peripheral nerve damage, or are there certain surgical specialties that are trained in this particular area? Yeah, no, excellent question. A, a neurologist can help to identify if there's a problem with the nerve, but in terms of the repair, it's going to be referred to a physician. And so also uh, knowledgeable in this area are reconstructive plastic surgeons. And uh, less obvious to many patients, um, most hand surgeons are also trained in nerve repair. And they do nerve repair across much of the body, not just in the hands. So typically, a patient would end up seeing either a plastic surgeon or a hand surgeon to get their nerves repaired. You talked about transferring a, a healthy nerve from one part of a person's body to another part of their body to, re to repair damage. What about from a, a totally different person? Is that something that can uh, happen when it comes to repairing damaged nerves? Well, excellent question. If there's been that type of uh, transfer of nerves done for, for many years, trying to do both related donors um, and then what's called a processed allograft, so a, a, a donation from another person uh, that's processed in a way to try and uh, minimize the immune response. And historically what had been seen is that those two options did not provide good nerve function, that there is a significant immune response. And in the processing to remove the cells that elicit an immune response, they ended up uh, substantially damaging the nerves. Nerves are tiny, very fragile structures, and removing the cells was destroying the actual structure of the nerve. And actually, Axigen's uh, flagship product, Advanced Nerve Graft, now it is the solution for those issues. Uh, we actually provide human proteins from uh, a, 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 an, a, another donor and uh, a non-related donor that have been processed in a way that we remove the cells and cellular debris while preserving this essential microarchitecture and biochemical cues that tell the body to build a nerve in the site. The, the, the body treats this implant as almost like a three-dimensional blueprint. It says, oh, I know what to do here. I need to repopulate it. I need to revascularize. I need to repopulate it with cells. I need to regenerate the nerve fibers through it. And that's what allows the patient to have restoration of function. Give us a website where we can learn more about Axigen and the uh, technology that you're developing there. Sure. Um, our site is uh, www.axigeninc, A-X-O-G-E-N-I-N-C.com. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for taking the time. 
All right. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Karen Zatteray, Chairman, CEO, and President of Axigen. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.